be the national government place. It's always been their answer. Tracy Martin. Thank you, Mr Chair. I rise to take a call on the, um, the Youth Wage Bill, Amendment Bill, and just to address a couple of issues that um, Mr Sabin and Mr Arkenvall raised, actually. Mr Sabin, first of all, um, with, the, uh, with the story that he graced us with with regard to employers coming to see him and saying that they were unable to employ young people with the skills that they, that they required, the skills that they required to actually gain employment inside their industry. And I recognise Mr Sabin's point. I recognise the points of those employers. His answer, however, this government's answer, however, is completely misguided. If this government truly wants wanted to support those local employers to employ local young people, then why would they have removed the funding from places like Otrahonga, where you have a massively successful model where community has come together to train local young people with local young skills for local employment? Where the mayor of Otrahonga brought together those employers and said, what are the skills you need, guys? What are the skills we need for our young people to actually be able to get out there and gain work just down the road from where they live. And that is what happened. Employers came in, they highlighted on, in this instance, the WinTech prospectus, which of those skills were the ones that needed to be required. Local government worked with WinTech and said, we will give you a building with zero rent zero rent so that you can actually come here and train our young people in only the skills, the skills that would gain them employment. That is something that would actually work, not paying somebody less to do the work. Where is the incentive for the young people? And I asked Mr Sabin, how many 16, 17, 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds has he consulted in his constituency about this policy that he stands by it, that he says that it is the answer for us? And I also want to pick up on the comments by Mr Arkenvall, who I'm not sure if Mr Arkenvall was here in the country in the 1990s, was here the last time we had a youth wage actually put into this place. I'm not sure whether Mr Arkenvall is aware of the stats around what actually did happen the last time a youth wage was brought into this country and the displacement that Mr Goff talks about. And I would suggest, and I can send to Mr Arkenvall's office, some of the suicide statistics of older males about that time, when they were laid off through the recession, when they found their companies and their employers going into receivership, and they were trying to pay their mortgages, they were trying to feed their children, and they couldn't get a job at the local gas station pumping gas because they were undercut every single time by a young person who could be paid less. Those are real statistics. I can send them to Mr Arkenvall's office if he would like them. This is going to create the same difficulty and it will create no more jobs. There is, and recently, the Ministry of Social Development and the Minister of Social Development pulled back funding from, from the community answers around youth employment into major centralisation, particularly inside of Auckland with only floor employers for um, deliverers, I beg your pardon. So again, we've been down this pathway before. It is not a new idea, sir. It wasn't a good idea then and it's not a good idea now. We have young people who need to be able to support themselves, particularly at 18 and 19, and yet we're going to put them on something that none of us in this house would work for. None of us would actually take that job. And yet we say to them, you will. And we've combined it with some uh, legislation inside the Social Development Ministry that will force them to do so. So to have the word choice used at any time around this issue when speaking to 16, 17, 18 and 19 year olds is a fallacy. And I would say again, Mr Sabin, how many 16, 17, 18 and 9 year olds have you spoken to? And I would suggest very few, Mr Sabin, very few. Well, that would be lovely, Mr Sabin. Go out into your schools. You go out, go out into the schools up there, Mr Sabin, and let's see when they actually get the vote whether they would 
would keep you there. These are the voters of the future. The fact that you'll pass this legislation before these young people have any way, shape or form to actually either keep you in office or take you out of office is disrespectful, sir. This is a group of people who are without power inside this legislative chamber and we are taking advantage of them. Your party is taking advantage of them and so are you, sir. Dr Megan Wood. Thank you very, thank you very much, Mr Chairman, and I'm happy to.